Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. I was browsing on Reddit today and I came across this image posted by user Wubsy on the Steam Deck subreddit, RGB modded Steam Deck. It looks really cool just looking at the picture. And this is pretty much exactly the mod I had in mind when I did my unboxing of the JSOX transparent rear cover the other day. Uh, this is a mod I've been wanting to do since I thought about the idea of a transparent cover, and I'm sure I'm not the only one evidenced by this picture here. Um, a lot of people have had this idea to add RGB lights to the Steam Deck. And so the question was, you know, how do we control these lights? So if we look at the album that was posted, we see this top-down shot where it's lighting up behind the Steam Deck when it's sitting on a surface, and it looks really cool. And then you can see they definitely use the JSOX transparent back cover for this. And then on both sides, added in some addressable LED strips in the grips and then in this area here around the battery. So it looks really cool. And I was reading through the comments, and... Wubsy, the OP of this uh, image, posted, I have to look into implementing it for OpenRGB. So there was already some interest to get it working with OpenRGB, so I replied to that, and I said, I've been wanting to do this very mod. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do, and then I described some of the investigations that I've done, basically just looking at the teardown photos that are available online. I was looking at the motherboard and pretty much all the other components of the system, trying to find out if there were any usable communication interfaces inside the Steam Deck that we could tap into for RGB control. The best one, of course, would be USB, and there is a USB link between the motherboard and the controller board, the integrated controller, but USB, we would have to basically put an in-between board with a USB hub on it. And that would, we'd have to find a place to put that board. It would add some complexity. So I was then looking for either Serial or I2C, which are also viable options for RGB control. And the controller exposes a USB serial interface, but I'm not really sure what that's for. But there is an I2C interface available at least looking uh, through the I2C devices in the kernel. So then I was looking at the uh, teardown, trying to figure out if there was a point on the system that we could tap into possibly for I2C. And I think there is. So that's what I want to do in this video. I want to investigate and open up the Steam Deck, hook up the oscilloscope, and try to probe to see if we can find an I2C interface. So the first thing let's do is I'm going to go ahead and start up the Steam Deck. So we're going to start up the Steam Deck and then put it into desktop mode. And I've already set it up to do uh, SSH. And I've already put it into SteamOS uh, read-write mode and installed the I2C tools in Pac-Man. And this tool set will allow us to probe for I2C controllers. Uh, it's the same thing we use for debugging and testing OpenRGB on PCs for the SM bus. But once it boots up, uh, I'll show a little bit more of what I mean by this. So it's booted up. So let's go ahead and go into desktop mode. And then I'm just going to set it to the side and go back to the computer and we'll open up the terminal. I've already got it set up. So we're going to SSH into the Steam Deck. Now that we're in the Steam Deck, 
let's do sudo i2c detect dash l. So this command will show all the available I squared C adapters or host uh, con devices on the motherboard. And it comes up empty, but that's because we haven't loaded the I squared C dev module. So let's do that. The I squared C dev module is responsible for exposing I squared C adapters to user space. So user space programs rather than just kernel drivers can talk to I squared C. So now let's do this again. And we have several different interfaces. We have four that are uh, designware I squared C adapter. And these, I believe, are just uh, custom ones that are probably added to the Valve's custom APU system on a chip. Uh, these don't really show up in your normal PC. And then we have um, these, the AMD GPU. These are parts of the GPU, and I guess the onboard uh, Radeon GPU, that even though it's integrated into a chip, still has an I squared C bus. Usually, what an I squared C bus on a GPU is used for is for connecting to a display. The display reports uh, its EDID information, which is like resolution, refresh rate, the name of the monitor, and all those different timing parameters get reported to the PC over an I squared C interface. Um, this is on VGA, HDMI, DisplayPort, uh, DVI, and maybe some others, but definitely those four have an I squared C link associated with all those display connectors. So that's what that is. That's gonna be from the GPU. And then we have our chipset, and these uh, also show up on PCs, and, and this, is how we access the RGB RAM and motherboards, uh, motherboards that at least use an I2C RGB controller on PCs. But the question is, can we use these on the Steam Deck for anything? So the first thing I'm going to do is we can do I2C, well, sudo I2C detect, and then we can try to probe each interface. Let's start with the PII X4 adapters because those are the ones that on PC motherboards anyway are the most useful, especially the one that's port 0 at 0B00. That one almost always on PC has the DRAM SPD modules attached, which is the chip on the DRAM modules that contains timing and manufacturer information. So let's do um, 8, because port 0 PIX4 is I squared C8, so we just need this number here. This can confuse your I squared C bus. Yes, we know that, so we're going to go ahead and continue. Now this is coming up empty, <clears throat> and normally... You would expect to see, I think it's address 0x36 or 35 uh, will show up for DDR4. And then one or more of these, 50 to 57, will be populated. Um, basically, if you have eight DRAM slots in your machine, each DRAM slot will be mapped to one of these addresses. And so if you had like two slots populated, you would have two addresses here that would be detected. Unfortunately, we're not detecting anything uh, on the DRAM there. So that means the Steam Deck is kind of a specialty device, so it might not use normal SPD for timing information on the RAM, which means we might not be able to easily find where these uh, I squared C lines are on the motherboard uh, because Basically, we would want to be able to find the I squared C lines on the motherboard so we can tap into them. Now, I squared C10 is the secondary I squared C interface, and it's showing like all of the things detected here, which my guess would be that either this bus just doesn't exist on the SOC or that 
the SCL and SDIA lines are just tied either high or low. I, I'd have to look at the S uh, the I squared C specification to see which one it is. But these are not accessible because they're just tied up. I don't want it to suspend. Wake up. The uh, Steam Deck just went to sleep. Let's wake it back up. That probably killed off the SSH connection. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. So then let's go back to the list of devices. So if we rule out 8, 9, and 10, it's highly unlikely that the GPU bus will get us anywhere. 4, 5, 6, and 7 are all GPU related. So let's look at those 0, 1, 2, and 3, which I think are just specific to the system on chip that the Steam Deck uses. We'll see if there's any devices detected on those. So let's start with 0. Okay, so we found something at address 53. And UU usually means that that address is in use by a kernel driver, so you're not able to talk to it. So it looks like there is something at address 53. Uh, you can see that by going, it's the 50 row 3 column, so it's 53. Uh, let's do 1, nothing, 2, nothing, 3. Uh, I would guess nothing if it's taking that long to scan. So the next thing we can do is we can look in the system entry. So let's do cd sys class. And if we look in here, we have i squared c dev and we have i squared c adapter. Let's cd into i squared c adapter. And then the one that we're interested in had the device was I squared C0. And so we have some things here. So let's see. So we have three. It looks like there are three devices registered with this bus. And so the idea is we want to figure out what these devices are. Because if we can identify a chip name or a part that is identifiable on the motherboard from these interfaces or these drivers, then we know what to look for whenever we're looking at our teardown photos or taking the device apart. So we know where we might find those I squared C lines. So let's start with this uh, first one, I squared C dash NVTN 2020. So we found some information here. We found NVTN2020 and NAU8821. So let's go ahead and just try Googling. Um, I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it easier. Let's do NVTN 2020 and see what that is. So looking at the config entry in the kernel for that, it looks like it is an audio codec made by Nuvaton Technology Corporation. Uh, it's for sound. So we could possibly look for NAU88L21 on the board. That would be something we could look for, but my guess is being an audio codec, it might be a relatively difficult chip to solder to. It could be one that has a lot of pins or is a, the pins like a BGA or a QFN or one of the other more difficult to solder to packages, um, which would make it a little hard to get to the I squared C lines unless we could find a component nearby. So let's also look at that other one. Uh, I squared C dash PRP zero 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 one zero zero. 
Let's do... So this says it's an NLGHT TCTI, and it says OPT3001, so that might be something we can search for. So let's search for OPT3001, and already from the Google search results here, I think we're on to something, because this comes up from TI and says it's an optical ambient light sensor. So this from Texas Instruments is a digital ambient light sensor. It has one, two, three, four, it's got, looks like six pins, a six pin device, and two of those pins are SCL and SDA, which are the I squared C data lines, data and clock. Those are the wires that we're interested in. That's the one we want to get access to for our RGB controller. And the, the thing is, though, this is an ambient light sensor. It has to be exposed to the light to be useful. And we know exactly where that is if we look at a Steam Deck teardown. Um, I want to say the iFixit guide had this exposed. So yes, this is the picture that I thought was interesting. Um, full screen. So this is the Steam Deck all torn apart by iFixit. And if we look right here, I don't know if we can zoom in any further than that. We can. Let's look at that device right there. Up in this little ribbon cable that goes behind the LCD, we see that it has, it's basically the PCB, the flex PCB for the two microphones that are above the screen. One there, and then one over here. But it also, has this on it. And this, as you can see, is a three pin device with a plastic clear looking shell and some sort of silicon dye sensor in the middle that looks very much like our ambient light sensor. And it's in a position where an ambient light sensor would be. So that makes sense that that is going to be our device, which means that this ribbon has I squared C SDL or SCA and SDL SDA and SCL I mean uh, on this ribbon and that goes through the shell and comes out in the back and connects to not GLaDOS the potato but this little PCB here. This, I think, was called the audio board. It has the headphone jack and the volume buttons. This connects to the motherboard. And then this little thing here, this little connector, is what connects the microphone PCB, the flat flex that goes through to that board we just looked at. So in addition to the two microphones, this connector has to have SCL and SDA as well as that interrupt line for the I squared C interface that controls that uh, light sensor. So this is where I want to probe and try and this is where I think we can tack on for our RGB controller. Uh, there's also some test pads neatly arranged on this board. We might just be able to solder to these test pads. That would be really nice. So. I think the, the next step is I'm going to take my Steam Deck apart. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I really want to try this mod. I really want to figure this out, and I really do like the idea of the back cover, the transparent back cover, so I think I'm just going to go for it. It's been working okay for me. So let's take it apart, and then I've got the scope hooked up so we can see if we can capture some I squared C data. So let's go back to the camera here. Okay. So, the first step is to take apart the Steam Deck, but before we're going to do that, let's shut it down. 
And then once it shuts down, pretty sure it's shut down now, okay. Then we're going to take out the micro SD card. This is super important. If you don't take out the micro SD card, removing the back panel will crack the SD card right in half. So uh, I've seen this pop up all over Reddit and Steam Deck forums, people snapping their probably expensive one terabyte SD cards with all their games on it clean in half because they took the back cover off. Don't do that. Take it out. So we'll put that off to the side. I'll just flip this over. Now we will need a small Phillips screwdriver to remove the eight screws that hold the back cover in. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put it like this and we can kind of map our screws out. Uh, find one that fits. Yeah, that one works. Okay, so now we just need to remove all eight screws. Note that the screws on the bottom here are longer than the other ones. So we'll put that up to there. Um, I don't remember if these other ones on top are also long. We'll find out. Nope. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. So these are longer. These are shorter. Okay, so I've removed all of those screws. Let's put this off to the side. And then now we can start removing the back cover. So we need to get in and there are some clips that you have to separate. And getting these ones on the outside are a little tricky. I don't want to break the back cover. Okay. I got that side to come out. Let's get this side. Okay. And now the back cover is separated. So we can put this off to the side. And then we can look at our board here. Now this camera doesn't really zoom. So I'll just move the Steam Deck up a little closer. Um, so basically uh, the idea of this mod would be we want to add LED strips at very least like here, here, and then we want to add a controller. Now the I squared C interface that we're looking for, I expect to be on this board here. Um, so 
the goal would be to probe this board and try to find an I squared C interface. So I'm going to assume that this metal looks like a magnesium or some kind of lightweight metal alloy is grounded. So we can clip our scope probe to that. Uh, and then I'm going to just I'll boot the Steam Deck back up and log back in with SSH. And then we can flip it over and run I squared C detect, which will cause some activity on the I squared C bus. And we can probe it and hopefully we'll see I squared C data. Uh, if we can then figure out the I squared C data and clock pins, we should be in business for trying to come up with some kind of RGB mod. Uh, we can use basically the same idea as what I did for the Pine Phone, probably the same firmware, same protocol, just different number of LEDs, and then map them a little differently, and we'll have a controller. And we'll also need power. Uh, I'd have to ask uh, Wubsy where he found power on the board. Um, I think it was mentioned somewhere in the comments that someone on Twitter had discovered uh, power points on one of the controller PCBs. But that's uh, something we'll figure out after we've found the I2C interface. So let's go ahead and boot it back up. So I'm going to put the Steam Deck into desktop mode, and then we should be able to SSH back in. Actually, I don't even think you need it in desktop mode. Okay, so we're back into the Steam Deck. So we're going to load I squared C dev, and then... Uh, no, we need to sudo i2c detect zero. So that is the command that I think we're going to have some success with. So now I'm going to bring up the scope here. So this camera isn't the greatest, but I have the scope set to two volts per division. And let's check our trigger conditions here. Uh, we're going to edge trigger on channel 1 on a rising edge. Uh, I think that's fine. So any I squared C data should show up on channel 1. So we're going to just look at channel 1 for now. I'll put the channel 2 probe off to the side. Um, so we're just going to look at the lines one at a time here. And the scope is running, so let's go ahead and, so the Steam Deck is on. We're going to flip it over. Actually, I'm going to put it upside down so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. We'll take the uh, probe here. Let's clip it to this metal shield because uh, that should be a good ground. Then I'm going to, on the PC, I'm going to have it ready to run I squared C detect zero. And then let's go ahead and just see if we can look at this board. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to come up on camera, but on this board, there's these test points. And each test point runs up to this connector that goes to the ribbon. Now this ribbon goes over to the front to the light sensor on the front of the screen. So I think we need to just probe. There's like, I don't know, two rows of five test points. 
So we can look at those and see if any of those are I squared C. Um, it did. What's it doing? Don't shut off. Oh, it just went back to uh, game mode. Okay. Um, so I can still run I squared C detect. So let's start on the bottom row with this first test point. Now we got a little bit of voltage on there. Um, not much. Uh, I have my probe set at 10 times. Let's make sure. Yeah, okay. Let's set for a 10 times probe. So let's probe this first one and then we'll run I squared C detect and we get nothing on the scope. On to the second one. Uh, it looks like we get nothing on the second one. Let's run I squared C detect. Nothing. Uh, let's raise our trigger there just to see if we nope okay third one oh 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 that one has some data on it let's go ahead and zoom in on that um actually let's reset our horizontal Okay. So we have some kind of repeating pattern here. This could be an I squared C clock. Let's see if there's any change. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, and let's move this over here and see if there's any change whenever we run I squared C detect zero. Ah, I think we are catching something if it's bumped my probe a little bit. Let's zoom out a little bit. And I think that was number three. Let's go back to number three. So we are getting these little bursts of data, which very well could be from the I squared C driver for the light sensor itself, because it will be constantly pulling the light sensor. Uh, so let's go ahead and detect again. I don't know if you caught it. But there's these blips of a lot of small packets that we're seeing. Um, let's see if we can try and capture that any better. Let's see how what the rate of this continuous... That's 5 milliseconds per division. So... One, oh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So that happens roughly every five milliseconds it's pulling. Let's try I squared C detect again. I think this is it, but it's hard to tell the data that we're sending with I squared C detect against the already continuous stream of data. So if we assume that this is the I squared C connection and we zoom in, this one is going to be the clock line because it's consistent. 
They're just all high and low consistently. Uh, if we count the pulses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, uh, it's hard to t it's hard to tell by counting. It's more than nine. It's more than ten because I think you would have a start condition, um, eight bits, and then ack, and then a stop condition. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. So that was the third one. Let's look at the fourth one. Okay, that's definitely data. So let's see if this is the light sensor. If I cover up the light sensor, well, let's zoom out. So that is definitely some sort of data. Okay, I think what I'm going to try and do is get in there with both probes and see if I can capture three and four. That's a little tight in there, but I think we can, can get it. Um, so yeah, let's, that one's on. Three. That one's on four. Now I can't really uh, pause the scope, but I think what I'll try and do is let's increase the scale move this off to the side of the screen and I'm gonna put the camera on just the scope so we can get a better view of what we're looking at so okay I think that's a good picture uh, can we get it back if we can hold it there then I can review this footage later and um, try and figure out what this is actually sending. But it definitely does look like I squared C. We have a clock and we have data. So, oh, wrong. This is what I want. So, I think we've definitely found that there is uh, some data in this on this board. Uh, which lines up with my expectation that there is a, an amb ambient light sensor on I squared C. The data has a clock and data line, which lines up with I squared C. Um, so I guess the last thing would just be to check these remaining pads to make sure that none of those look like I squared C, because I doubt that there's going to be two different I squared C interfaces. One of them might have the occasional blip because there was an interrupt line. Um, but I wouldn't expect to see clock or data on any of these other pins. Oh, let's bring the scope back on screen. And then, so we did one, two, which were nothing, three and four, which we think are clock and data, and then five. Five is just a floating value. Now, these actually could be microphones but microphone levels would be probably fairly low depending on I think this is before the amplifier uh, so nothing there so let's do this top row so six nothing seven well that looks like our clock again it could just be the same line actually it looks like there's a trace running right between those two. So yeah, that's going to be clock. This should be data. Yep, that's data. Those are just two pads that are connected right together. And this should be nothing. What's this one? Um, that looks like our maybe a 3.3 volt rail. Not sure. It's not data. And then let's try and get in here to this 
one here. That looks like it's actually just part of the ground plane, so that's probably 3.3 volts in ground. And then what's this one? That it doesn't show anything. It's not ground, but there's no voltage. And there's some bigger pads over here. Um, so just to try and show what I was doing. I was probing these little tiny pads there. Now let's try these bigger ones that there's some bigger pads down here. Uh, let's just make sure the, the deck is still on. Yeah, the deck's still on. Okay. If it goes to sleep, it might shut off the uh, I squared C. That would not be good. So let's start by probing this big one here. Uh, nothing. Second one. Nothing. This little one under the switch. Actually. No, it's not the switch. This one. Okay, that one's the switch. That one, nothing. Just for fun. Is this one the other switch? No. Actually, this one that we looked at over here might be the switch. Not 3.3. .3. Yep. That one's the other switch. So these are just the switches. But So that means we have found our I2C clock and data lines, which is basically what I set out to do in this video. So I think I'm just going to end it here. Um, well, actually, yeah, I'll just end it here. And then um, we'll do another video of figuring out the uh, Arduino. I ordered some LEDs, uh, but I don't have them yet. I The only LEDs I have are one LED per, or what? 30 LEDs per meter, which is not a dense enough LED strip to really get anything into the deck because you might get like two or three LEDs this way and I want like five or six. So I ordered some denser LED strips, but I think that's where I'm going to leave it off and then I'll come back and try to put in some LEDs, see if we can tack onto that I squared C bus and then uh, that might be a project for this weekend. Anyways, thanks for watching.